Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters. Grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and I would like to say grace and peace to my brothers in Born Again Israelites and Risen with Christ Ministry. My brother Karadazar and my brother Beloved. Grace and peace, my brothers. And grace and peace to all my brothers and sisters that are in Christ and love the gospel. Now, today's topic is part eight of the Sermon on the Mount. Christ Jesus' attitude towards oaths. Now we're going to be in the book of Matthews, chapter 5, verse 33 to 37, the Sermon on the Mount. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old times, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thy oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is, the God, it is God's throne, nor by the earth. For it is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by the head. Because thou can, cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these commit of evil. Now that's in the back book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 33. Through 37. Now we have here an exposition of the third commandment, which is in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. I'm sorry, Exodus, chapter 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 7. That's the third commandment. Now, that either now that that's either by swearing falsely or rashly by his name or by condemning it by not walking in the image of Christ, the fruit of the spirit, which we are the more concerned right to understand because it is practically said that God will not hold him guiltless. However, he may hold himself who breaks this commandment by taking the name of the Lord in vain. Now, as the command, now it, as this command, it is agreed on all hands that it forbids perjury, for swearing, and the violation of oath and vows. We're gonna go in the book of Matthew, chapter five, verse thirty-three. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old times, "Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thy oath." As in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 33. The meaning of the third commandment against the perverse opinion and judgment of the scribes and courts who execute, exec, I'm sorry, who excuse by oath or in, indirect forms of swearing. This was said to them of old times and is the true intent and meaning of the third commandment. Thou shalt not use or take up the name of God. In vain, as we do by an oath, in vain, or unto vanity or a lie. He has not lift up his soul unto vanity, it is expounded in the next word, nor sworn deceitfully. We're going to go in the book of Psalms, chapter 24, verse 4. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 24, verse 4. Now, perjury is a sin condemned by the light of nature as a complication of impidity towards God and injustice towards men. And as we as rendering a man highly obnoxious to the divine wrath, which was always judged to follow so infallibly upon that sin. That the form of swearing were commonly turned into cursing or denouncing or pre, I mean, Im, imprecating as, as that God do so to me. And more also, and with us, so help me God. Wishing I may never have any help from God if I swear falsely, but by the consent of nation has men cursed themselves, not doubting but that God would curse them if they lied against the truth 
then when they solemnly called God to witness it to it. It is added from some other scripture, but shall perform unto the Lord thy own. So like, you know, a lot of people, they say, swear to God, they, they you know, w- when they want to confirm something, they don't even understand. A lot of times it'd be, they heard something from somebody else and they trying to confirm it as it's the truth. So, and they would still say they swear. So it's, it's, it's crazy. So Christ saying, don't do it at all. I mean, you know, you're playing around, you're putting God involved with this. And you don't understand the consequences of that act. So we're going to go in the book of Numbers, chapter 30, verse 2. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a, bent, with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 30, verse 2. So in other words, if you say it, make sure it's the truth. And if you say whatever you're going to do, make sure you fulfill that, that saying. And don't, and especially if you're putting God involved with it. Now, which may be meant either of the, th- those promises to which God is a party, vows made to God, those, these must be punctually paid. We're going to go in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 4. When thou vowest a vow to God, defer, defer not, to pay, to, not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 4. Now he speaks of vows which are approved by God's word and serve to his glory. Now we're going to go on the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 5. Better is it that thou should have not vow than that thou should vow and not pay. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 5. For those promises made to our brethren to which God has a witness, he being appealed to concerning our sincerity, these must be performed to the Lord, which an eye to him and for his sake. For to him, by ratifying the promises with an oath, we have made ourselves debtors. And if we break a promise so ratified, we have not... We have not lied unto men only, but unto God. It is here added that the commandment does not only forbid false swearing, but all rash, unnecessary swearing. Swear not at all. We're going to compare to the book of John. I'm sorry, the book of James, chapter five, verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. That's in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 12. Because even the best men sometimes through impatience slips and speak oath, sometimes lesser, sometimes greater. The apostle warns us to detest such wickedness and to accustom our tongues to simple and true talk, or as as they say today, real talk was supposed to be of the truth. We're supposed to be of the truth. Not that all swearing is sinful so so far from that, if rightly done, it is a part of the word of the God, of God in the gospel, in the gospel teaching. And we in it we in it give unto God the glory due to his name. We're gonna go on the book of Isaiah chapter forty five, verse twenty three. I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in a righteous and shall not return that to me. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. That's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 23. That is that the thing which I have promised will be faithfully performed. The knowledge of God and the true worshiping will be through all the world. We're going to go on the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 11, where it was said again for it is written as I live said the Lord every knee shall bow and 
every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall I confess to God. Well, shall confess to God. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 11. This is a form of an oath. This is a form of an oath proper to God alone for he and a none but he lives and has his being to himself. Will acknowledge to be to be from God by which he signifies that we must not only serve God in heart but declare the same also by outward professions. We're going to go on the book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 2 and thou shalt swear and thou shalt swear the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. That's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 2. You will detest or hate the name of idols. So let's go in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 4. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their names into my lips. That's in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 4. Now a grief of conscience and miserable destruction, he would neither by outward professions, nor in heart, nor in mouth, consent of their idolatries, and will with reference swear by the living God. When your oath may be advanced, God's glory and profit others. And here, by swearing, he means the true word of God. Speaking God's truth, not in the lie. Don't make up your own theory or your own doctrine, because then you're a false witness. And you definitely don't swear by God of his word. We find Paul confirming what he said by such solemnities. We're going to go in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. Moreover, I call God for a a record upon my soul that to spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinthian. That's in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse 23. Now, coming to the matter, Paul swears that he did not lightly alter his purpose of coming to them, but rather that he did not come to them for this reason that he being present might not be forced to deal more sharply with them than he would like against myself and to the danger of my own life when there was a necessity for it. In swearing, we pawn the truth of something known. To confirm the truth of something doubtful or unknown, we appeal to a greater knowledge, to a, to a higher court, and imprecate the vengeance of a righteous judge. If we swear deceitfully, now the mind of Christ in this matter is that we must not swear at all. But when we are dully called to it, the justice of charity to our brother or respect to the the commonwealth, make it necessary for the end of strife. So in other words, make it where if you if you swear it by the truth of the word of God, make sure that you're, you're doing it too. Reconcile any type of differences you and that person may have as opposed to causing to be even worse and and just swearing and causing strife and causing backbiting gossip. Now we're going to go on the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 16. For the men rarely swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. That's in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 16. In other words, if you're going to swear, make sure it's to reconcile the differences between you and your brethren. Don't swear so you can just sound right and you're swearing on something someone told you and not knowing if it is true. Of which necessary the civil magistrates or is ordinary to be the judge. We may be sworn, but we must now swear we may we may be adjourned and so obliged to it, but we must not thrust ourselves upon it for our own worldly advantage, that we must not swear lightly and showing a lack of respect in common discourses. 
it is a it is very great is it a very great sin to make a ludicrous appeal to the glorious majesty of heaven which being a sacred thing ought always to be very serious it is a gross often of God's holy name and of one of the holy things which the children of Israel sanctify to the Lord. It is a sin that has a, no cloak, no excuse for it, and therefore a sign of a graceless heart in which enmity to God reigns. Thy enemies, my, thy enemies take thy name in vain. That we must in a special manner avoid conveying or implying a promised oath of which Christ more particularly speaks here for they are oaths that are to be performed the influence of an affirmative oath immediately cease when we have faithfully discovered the truth and the whole truth but a promise promissory oath binds so long and may be so many ways broken by the surprise as well as strength of a temptation that it is not to be used, but upon great necessary, necess, necessity. The frequent requiring and using of oath is a reflection upon true believers, who should be of such acknowledged fidelity as that their sober words should be as sacred as their solemn oath. That we must not swear by any other creature, it should seem there were some who in civility as they thought to the name of God would not make use of that in swearing but would swear by heaven or earth this Christ forbids we're going to go in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 34 but I say unto you swear not at all neither by heaven for it is God's throne that's in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 34 and show that there is nothing we can swear but by but it is some way or other related to God, who is the fountain of all being. And therefore, that is that it is as dangerous to swear by them as it is to swear by God himself. It is the, the, the rarity of the creature that is laid at stake. Now that cannot be an instrument of testimony, but as it has regard to God, who is the chief truth, as for instance, swear not by the heaven, as sure as there is a heaven. This is true, for it is God's throne where he resides, and in a particular manner manifests his glory as a prince upon his throne. This being the ins inseparable dignity of the upper world. You cannot swear by heaven, but you swear by God himself, nor by earth, for it is his footstool. He governs the motions of this lower world as he rules in heaven. So he rules over the earth and though under his feet, yet it is also under his eye and care and stands in relation to him as is. We're going to go into the book of Psalm chapter 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That's in the book of Psalms chapter 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's, so that in swearing by it, you swear by its owner. Neither by Jerusalem, a place for which the Jews had such a veneration that they could not speak of anything more sacred to swear by. But besides the common reference, Jerusalem has to God as part of the earth. It is in special relations to him, for it is the city of the great king. We're going to go in the book of Psalm, chapter 48, verse 2. Beautiful for the, for situations, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the side of the north, the city of the great king. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 48, verse 2. And the great king is Christ, with the Sermon on the Mount. Because the word of salvation came there to all the world, uh, that came there to all who would believe the city of God. We're going to go into the book of Psalm, chapter 46, verse 4. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 46, verse 4. The river of Sh 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 Shiloh, which passed through Jerusalem, meaning though the defense seems small, yet if God has appointed it, 
it is sufficient. He is therefore interested in it and in every oath taken by it. Neither shall you thou swear by the head, though it be near it be near thee and an essential essential part of thee, yet it is more God's than thine. For he made it and formed all the springs and powers of it, whereas thou didst thyself cannot from from any natural inheritance influence change the color of one's hair. So as to make it white or black, so that thou cannot swear by thy head. But thou swearest by him who is the life of thy head and the litter up of it. We're going to go on the book of Psalm, chapter 3, verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the, the, the lifter up of my head. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 3, verse 3. That therefore in all our communications we must content ourselves with. Yea, yea, and nay, nay. We're going to go on the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these com- cometh of evil. So in other words, instead of sending it to him, you swear it, you swear it, just yes, is it, whether it is a yes or no, simple as that, keep it as that. You don't have to go into the swearing part. But in this day and age, people do it so frequently as part of their vocabulary. Whatever you affirm, affirm it alone, and whatever you deny, deny it alone without any more words. From an evil conscience or from the the devil, in ordinary discourse, if we affirm a thing, let us only say yea. It is so, and it it, it need be to evidence or assure of a thing, we may doubt it and say yea, yea, indeed, it is so, rarely, rarely was our Savior's yea, yea. So if we deny a thing, let it, let, let it sacrifice to, to say, let it sacrifice to say no, or if it be requisite to re- repeat the, the denial and say no, no. And if our fidelity be known that we will suffer, that suffers to gain us credit, and if it be questioned to back what we say, with swearing and cursing is but to render it more suspicious. They must, they who can swallow a profane oath will not strain at a lie. It is a pity that this which Christ puts in the mouth of all his disciples should be fasty as a name of reproach upon a sake, faultly enough other ways. The reason is observable observable for whatsoever is more than these these come of evil though it do not amount to the iniquity of an oath it comes so an ancient copy as it it comes from the devil the evil ones the evil one it comes from the corruption of men's nature from pas- passion and powerful from a reigning vanity in the mind and a contempt of sacred things it comes from that Deceitfulness, which is in men, all men are considered liars. Therefore, men use this protestance, protestation, because they are distrustful one of another, and think they cannot be believed without them saying they swear. True believers should, should for the credit of the gospel, avoid not only that which is in itself evil, but that which cometh of evil. And have the appearance of it that may be suspected as a bad thing which comes from a bad cause. An oath is psychic which supposes a disease. Now that concludes this eighth part segment of the Sermon on the Mount. We will continue tomorrow with part nine of the Sermon on the Mount. The retaliation. In Christ Jesus name may God be the glory. As I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit. I come in love and leave in peace. Grace and peace and much love and blessings to you and your family. Have a blessed day to all the saints, my brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus. Amen.